Hello everybody, Gavin McCormack here. Welcome. Now we are in Antarctica and we're actually floating on the Great Southern Ocean behind a huge iceberg here. And we're really lucky this week to be joined by John. Hello, Hi. John. How are you? John is a marine biologist. Now this week we're talking all about oceans. Now we are in the Great Southern Ocean here, John. We've traveled all the way down from Europe and we are in the Antarctic. Tell us, what's so special about this ocean? Well, the Southern Ocean is the only ocean that is continuous around the entire planet. So the Atlantic, Indian and Pacific Oceans uh, all join the Southern Ocean. And the Southern Ocean is the only ocean on the planet where the current flows in the same direction all, all the way from the surface to the bottom. Wow. And so it forms a great circumpolar current around Antarctica isolating Antarctica from the other continents. Wow, so this ocean basically stays exactly where it is around the South Pole and just circumnavigates the planet. It does, but the water in it uh, branches off and goes up into the other oceans and receives water from the other oceans. And so it's part of what's known as the Global Oceanic Conveyor, which conveys water around the entire planet. Cool. Now, how does this ocean affect the rest of the world? Other countries, continents, islands? Does this ocean have any impact on the weather or how life forms in other parts of the world? So the Southern Ocean freezes over each winter. So where we are now, you'd be walking across the ice here in a few months' time. Right. So it freezes to a thickness of about two metres in one year. Right. And as the water freezes, this is seawater, and it tends to exclude the salt part of the water and freeze as fresh water. And so salt or br brine, which is really salty water, is super chilled. It's below the freezing point of water and it sinks to the bottom of the ocean and flows out over the Antarctic continental shelf and actually forms a bottom layer of all of the oceans on the planet. It's known as Antarctic bottom water. And so wherever you are on the planet, the bottom water comes from sea ice in Antarctica. Really? And can you give us a specific place in the world where this kind of water here in the Great Southern Ocean might have an impact? Are there any islands? Definitely. So uh, the largest fishery in the world is the Peruvian Anchoveta fishery, and that's based on upwelling of Antarctic bottom water coming right up to the surface. So in the ocean, all of the growth, all of the plant growth and everything, the algae and um, most of the life is in the top um, 60 metres, the euphotic zone, and all the nutrients settle, settle to the seabed, and so this deep Antarctic bottom water becomes very rich in nutrients. And when you get an upwelling, that brings the nutrients up to the surface. Yes. Um, so you have everything you need for the growth of uh, algae. You have the nutrients, the water, and the sunlight off the coast of Peru, which creates an enormous algal bloom it feeds the anchoveta and uh, feeds the world's largest fishery. Oh my goodness me. So even though this is so far away, it helps to spring life all over the world. Yeah, the whole planet is, is one system and the oceans join that system together. Now, John, this week I've seen so many animals here. Leopard seals, fur seals, I've seen humpback whales, I've seen thousands of penguins. Why are so many animals attracted to this ocean especially? Well, this part of the Southern Ocean, uh, where we have the Antarctic Peninsula and then the Scotia Arc, which is an undersea mountain chain, is a really rich area, a really rich part of the ocean, because the Antarctic Circumpolar Current actually strikes these undersea mountains, and that creates another upwelling, bringing nutrient-rich water to the surface, uh, providing food for algae, nutrients for algae, which then provides food for the krill, and then you have a very short food chain, algae, krill, up to the whales, the seals, the penguins that feed on krill mostly. Right, now around the world there are um, countries and companies fishing and overfishing, catching way too many fish and it's causing us significant problems in terms of our ecosystems and our global biomes. Down here in Antarctica I understand there are some very specific rules, can you tell us more about those rules? So the, um, all of our utilisation of Antarctic marine living resources is governed by an international body, the Convention for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, which sets limits on uh, exploitation of the resources in Antarctica. Um, and the, this is a whole of ecosystem approach to a fishery management that uses um, data on penguin populations, on seal populations, and the aim is to ensure that we don't only manage the fishery for the fishery stocks, but we manage the fishery for the whole ecosystem. That's right, because these all have a knock-on effect for the rest of the world. 
Now this week, we want you to go and investigate an ocean of your own choosing. There are many oceans in the world and seas, and we want you to investigate one that you find particularly interesting. Obviously, we want you to start with the Great Southern Ocean and then maybe branch off into the Atlantic or the Pacific or the Indian Ocean, because it's very important that we understand that all of these ecosystems, and as John said, oceans are all connected in different ways. From that point onwards, we want you then to start an initiative in your community where you find your closest waterway, maybe a river, could be a dam or even a lake, and then make a community action plan to try to make sure that it is clean and well maintained for all of the life that sustains itself in that waterway. John, we are very thankful to have you. It's been amazing to have you here. Thanks, Kevin. And we'll see you all next week. <laughs>